Welcome back to Gothic Homemaking. In this mundane to macabre transformation episode, I am absolutely going to transform a piece of furniture from the mundane to the macabre. Now, this particular furniture is admittedly not very mundane to begin with, but it could certainly be more macabre. Let's start from the beginning. You may recall an episode I made recently called Epic Gothic Homemaking Fails. In that episode, you saw that our beloved Shays Lounge finally deteriorated to the point of having to be tossed out onto the street. With the upholstery, the foam, and even the wooden frame completely trashed, it was just beyond saving. Now, I did have an opportunity to purchase that same exact Shays Lounge. But if you saw an episode called A Shame of Thrones, you might recall that our chaise was too big for the stairwell and I had to cut the legs off to get it into the lair. And to be honest, I wasn't really sure that I could suffer that trauma twice in one lifetime. But then suddenly, a stroke of luck. Remember that hell-themed absinthe bar I helped to create a while back? Well, it was supposed to be a pop-up. It was only supposed to be open for about two months. Instead, it ended up being open for almost two years. Well, when they finally decided to close, the owner asked me if I wanted any of the furniture at a deep, deep discount. And this was the same week that I had gotten rid of the chaise lounge. So the timing was perfect and the price was even more perfect. What wasn't perfect were the choices. Now, there were some great pieces in there, and I actually brought some of them here, and a lot of them just did not fit. What did physically fit into the space, though, was this love seat. Now, some of you are probably saying, that's gorgeous, don't mess with it, there's nothing wrong with it. And I'm guessing a lot of you might be thinking, that doesn't look like it belongs in the lair. And I'm saying both of those things. But here's the situation. That is a $1,200 love seat, and the owner of Café de l'Enfer gave it to me for about $250. So financially speaking, I really want to make this work. But I also want it to fit aesthetically into the Lair of Voltaire without ruining this incredible piece of furniture. And that is today's challenge. There's another bigger reason for why I really need for this transformation to work, but we're going to get to that later. In the meanwhile, let me change into something less vampiric, into something less piratey, something less vampirity, and let's get our talents dirty. Come along. Well, now we're in some work clothes and we're ready to tackle this project. Now, as I mentioned before, this piece of furniture fits physically very well into this space. In fact, it fits better than the one that we had before. It's not rubbing up against the wall and peeling all the paint off of the wall. However, it does not fit into the lair, stylistically speaking. And the most glaring and obvious problem here is this gold. Our accent color here, our metallic accent color here at the lair is pewter or silver. So this gold is really just not fitting in at all. So I'm probably gonna paint the gold parts of this furniture black lacquer to match all of the other furniture here at the lair. But there is a bigger problem and that problem is stylistic. The style of the wood cutting here is not really Baroque like the rest of the furniture at the Lair of Voltaire. It's more of a, like an Art Nouveau style. It's very flowery and I'm particularly bothered by this part here. Now Mayumi had an idea that we could maybe cut some of this out of here and give this piece of furniture a silhouette more befitting the Lair. I think it's a bold idea, I think it is a crazy idea, and I think it is a dangerous idea. But I say, let's grab that jigsaw and let's see what we can do. The couch was moved away from the wall. I got out my electric jigsaw and got to work. And I am not going to lie to you, I was 1 million percent terrified while I was doing this work here. I really honestly did not know if I was going to destroy this piece of work or achieve what I had in mind. But by the time I was done, it was actually the shape I wanted it to be. Now the surface was very, very rough after cutting, so I can tell you this is definitely going to need some sandpapering. Mayumi taped off the furniture and I got to the sanding. I started out, of course, with a very coarse sandpaper and worked my way down 
to finer grades until I was finally satisfied with the smoothness. At that point, I dusted off all of the extra sawdust and I wiped down the wood with a wet cloth to prepare it for painting. Mayumi taped off the upholstery and I chose the paint. I'd be using a latex paint in a gloss black. Now at this point, I feel it's important that I tell you that that was not my first choice of paint. If it were up to me, I probably would have used a spray black lacquer. And hey, if I was a bachelor, I would have done exactly that. I would have filmed in here with all the windows closed and I would have lived with the fumes and I wouldn't have been bothered one tiny bit. <laughs> but I am not here alone. My Yumi is presently here and I just knew that those kind of fumes were going to be a problem for her. So instead, I chose a brush on paint and a latex one at that because the fumes, I assume, were going to be less obnoxious. Now, I was concerned that the brush on paint would add unwanted texture from the brushing. I also wasn't sure I'd get the coverage that I wanted, but relationships are about compromise. And so the brush on latex paint is just going to have to be the right choice for this project at this time. I began applying the paint and as I feared, I really wasn't getting the coverage that I wanted. This latex paint really did not want to stick to that glossy gold surface. So that first coat was a little shoddy. However, I gave it a second coat, and this time it really did cover quite nicely, and honestly, the added texture wasn't that big of an issue. It's actually looking quite good. Next, Mayumi taped up the rest of the furniture, and I got to painting the legs and the front of the love seat. And two coats later, it was looking rather spectacular. Now it really looks like something that belongs in the lair. And I've got to tell you, this space here is really begging for a special detail, and I know just what to put there. If you saw the Café de l'Enfer episode, you might recall that there were skulls adorning the walls. Well, when I went to pick up this love seat, the owner gave me one of those skulls as a gift. And I just think this symbol of death is going to be the perfect addition to help us transform this love seat to a love never dies seat. And from a sentimental point of view, I also just really love the fact that one of the skulls that was on the walls of Café de l'Enfer gets to be part of our hell-themed love seat. Now, I think this skull is going to look great here. In fact, it might look too great. It might attract too much attention to itself. So, let's paint it black so that it blends in with the rest of the woodwork. But first, there's something I need to do. These skulls are hollow, which makes them very fragile. So what I want to do is I want to fill it with expanding foam. That way, if it shatters, the pieces will still hold together. Let's get that foam. Now there was a hole in it already from where it was hung on the wall, so I used that to add the expanding foam. Now as you can see, after a while, the foam will start to expand out of the skull. When it started to get really messy, I got myself a pair of gloves, because you do not want to touch this stuff with your bare hands. I mean, it is really not good to use with your bare hands. The only thing that washes it off is alcohol, and that's typically a pretty bad sign. And I gotta say, looking at this footage now, I think I probably used way too much foam. Now, I would say 24 hours is a great amount of time to wait before handling this thing. But once the foam is cured, you can pop the skull off of the foam. And if you have some residue, you can sand that off with a little bit of sandpaper. Now, because this skull is small, I can take it outside and spray it with some spray black lacquer. But first, I drilled a hole in the center of the skull and I inserted a quarter inch dowel. Now this dowel is gonna come in handy later, but for now what it helps me do is hold it in one hand like a spooky lollipop so that I can take it outside and paint it black. Once inside, I drilled a quarter inch hole in the wood, removed the excess sawdust, then I cut the dowel down to size and simply inserted it into the hole. Voila! There he is. Now, I was going to glue it in place, but I have to tell you, 
Leaving it this way is a much better idea because now I can sub it out with different types of motifs and different types of colors for different seasons or occasions. But I can tell you this piece of furniture already looks like it's finished and belongs in the lair. I love the way this love seat has turned out and let us be honest, we could call that finished. We could say it's done, it's fine, it looks great, it fits in the lair. I could just call it a day. But you know I'm not going to because you know I'm extra extra and I just have to take it an additional step. But first, there's an issue that has been driving me stark raven mad and we have an opportunity to fix it. So let's do just that. I have a sconce on the wall with a stuffed crow on it and it's positioned in such a way where it always seemed like the crow was sitting directly on my head. <laughs> I think we have an opportunity here to fix that. So I removed the sconce, I moved the furniture from the wall, I made some holes further down the way. I put in these screw-in anchors, couple of screws, I rehung my sconce, and returned my feathered friend to his perch. And now, I don't look like such a bird brain, and I have the space I've always wanted. And now that the composition of the area around the love seat is settled, I can now focus on adding a special touch to this piece of furniture. I went to Michael's Arts and Crafts store to the floral department, the dark floral department, where I started to choose some of their finest black artificial floral. I tossed it all on the ground as if I was hoping to come up with a black metal band logo, but instead I came up with a gothic bouquet worthy of dark side royalty. Next, I went to the Flower and Plant District in New York City, where you can find all manner of exotic plants and plant supplies. There at B&J Florist Supply, I purchased one of these black plastic planters. And orange, you glad I did? Because I attached it to the back of the love seat, and now this bucket can be a place to put a flower arrangement. But first, let's turn this couch around. We have our symbol of death, and now we need our symbol of love. And nothing says love like roses. And nothing says gothic love like black roses. Now, because these are wired, I can actually adjust them in such a way so they form sort of a crown around the skull, almost like a Mexican Katrina. Next, I'm using these peonies, I believe they are, as a second layer to our bouquet to give it a little bit of height. That almost looks like a Baroque wig. Next, I'm using these black thistles to create a vertical element in the center of our bouquet. And then I use these black leaves on the sides to give the bouquet some width and some depth. And last but not least, I use these dangly feathery bits as our wings. I put one on each side, and this almost looks like wings or, or like a feathered collar around the neck of this goddess of death. Ah, oh, isn't she beautiful? I think Orville would approve. In fact, I think Orville would fall in love with her. I feel like I've created a piece of furniture for the lair that embodies the concept of love lasting beyond death itself. I am so thrilled with how the Love Never Dies seat turned out. I was given an opportunity to save a thousand dollars and I was given a challenge, a really scary one, to transform a piece of furniture that was already really amazing into something that would aesthetically fit in here at the Lair of Voltaire. And I will be a hundred percent honest with you, I was terrified that I was going to ruin that piece of furniture. But I love the way it turned out. It actually exceeded my expectations. I love it, and I hope that you do too. Now, at the beginning of the episode, I mentioned that there was an even bigger reason for why I really needed for this project to work. You see, ever since I threw out that chaise lounge, there hasn't been a place in the lair for two people to sit together. And now there is. And that's important because now that there is once again 
a piece of furniture two people can sit in simultaneously here at the Lair of Voltaire. Mayumi Toyota can return to co-hosting episodes of Gothic Homemaking. <laughs> Yay! Welcome back. Thank you, my love. We missed you. Oh, I miss you too. What do you think of the love seat? Oh, it's amazing. But where's my love? I mean, it is a love seat. <laughs> <laughs> Are you ready to show these nice people all of the incredible Halloween home decor finds we've discovered recently? Yes, I am. Then we're all in luck because that is exactly what is coming up next when Gothic Homemaking returns. See you then.